Hello, this is Daniel, and I'm going electric for the average person. Today's topic, charging from home on 110 volts, specifically from my parents' home in the middle of nowhere in Northern Illinois, where there is no supercharger within a light year, and also no um, level two, 220 uh, middle speed charger. So I've rolled up into town here with 4% in my battery. And a little bit later in the video, I'm gonna to talk to you about the magic 4% number in a Tesla battery. I've discovered something a little unexpected. Uh, but in the meantime, I need to charge my battery. I got a little message from Tesla saying that the battery's low and I need to get some energy in it pretty quick. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do a two stage test here. One is getting from 4% up to 80. And then the other is probably gonna be um, 80 to 95, or maybe I'll do 80 to 90 and then 90 to 95 and see if you get that trickle charge in the end. Um, the electric input into the battery is gonna be so slow anyways. I wonder if there is in fact a slowdown or if it just keeps trucking along at the same pace. So come along on the journey. This could take two, three, four days. I'm not sure. So let's find out together. Welcome back. The process for charging from home is pretty easy. All you do is you take this little adapter piece right there and then you plug in to the extension cord or directly into the wall and this one goes directly into the wall. Um, and then it just goes from there all the way into the car and just like normal, you plug it straight in. As you can see in the dash display, it shows in the upper left hand corner that the vehicle is charging and somewhat cryptically and euphemistically it's showing 24 plus hours. I'm actually expecting that to be closer to like 60 hours to 72 hours. And who knows, maybe we'll go into like four days for the charge, we'll see. And then you can see that we've got uh, one kilowatt hour listed, or sorry, one kilowatt listed there and then zero kilowatt hours into the battery just yet. I mean, I've only been charging for a couple of minutes. And it appears, I don't know how to read the next figure, uh, 14 amperes. Uh, if you know how to read that figure, by all means, please educate me in the comments below. Um, and then to the right of that, that number has been bouncing between 113 and 114 volts, which is exactly what I was expecting um, the charge to come in at. So this scenario is going to be kind of fun uh, in the middle of nowhere with no real charging opportunities this is where we get to see how long it takes to charge. So I'm gonna let the car sit here for a couple days and uh, see what happens. I'll be checking in periodically to see where we are. And then I'll also talk about that magic 4% number. Day two of charging my car on 110 at my parents' house. Yesterday I plugged it in around 3.34, I'll have to look at the screenshots, um, probably four, and then uh, I let it go. Uh, I did plug it in on an extension cable and it all seemed fine. And then I came out a little bit later in the evening, took a picture of the dashboard and just to see what the percentage was. Although I didn't really look at the whole dashboard, I have to say, or the display. Then I was doing some reading last night in bed around 1am and uh, came across a couple of websites. I think it's Tesla Motors Club. I'll put the link down below. Uh, nice message board there on home charging. And while I'm reading, uh, I see all this stuff that's like, you really shouldn't charge on an extension cable. Or if you charge on an extension cable, it needs to be this type of cable that comes from this type of company with this kind of capacity and this width and this load and all this other stuff. And if you don't, then your cable could melt and catch on fire and you could overload the electric system in your house and burn it all down. So I got dressed, got out of bed and uh, went upstairs and disconnected. And interestingly enough, when I looked at the dashboard and was actually paying attention this time, there is a little message that comes up and I'll show the screenshot here. And I'm not reading it right now. I'm trying to remember what it said. Something to the effect of, we know that you're charging on an extension cable or there's bad wiring from wherever you're connected to. I unplugged the car 
and let it sit last night. So then I worked all day today from the basement. Uh, I am working remotely this whole time while I'm traveling around America. And then I got in the car this afternoon and got it as close to the garage as possible. And the Tesla extension um, cable, in fact, was just long enough to plug into one of the three outlets only that my dad has in his new garage, which he's not happy about. Like his old garage had like a thousand and now he's got one with only three. Uh, so we were able to reconfigure his workbench, move some things around and do whatever to plug in my car. So I think we're going to be fine. So I'm plugged back in. I'm going to see how it works. Uh, was looking at my parents' electric bill last night to see what they get charged per kilowatt hour of electricity. And it looks like tax fees and delivery and all this other crazy stuff that apparently these electric bills are broken out into. Um, all tallied, it looks like 11 cents per kilowatt uh, hour. Great. Uh, so that's where we are right now. And I still have to tell you guys about the magic 4%. Welcome back to the final night of my 110 volt at home charging experience. As you can see, I've installed some fun little Christmas lights to celebrate the upcoming holiday season. I think I'm gonna keep them in the car with me while I drive around on the next couple legs of my trip, which I think are gonna take me down to Texas, Louisiana, and then around the deep south and then wind up in Florida. So I think they'll add some fun holiday cheer. Um, nice little $8 find at Walmart. So I think that'll uh, give me some nice joy throughout the season. Two final topics before uh, I wrap up the video here. Let's start off with the magic 4% that I've been talking about uh, throughout the whole video. It's actually a pretty short story, but I think it's uh, pretty interesting and I'd like to get your feedback in the comments below if you have any experiences with it. I noticed when I was trying to deplete the battery from like 90% all the way down as close to zero as I could get the battery because I wanted to be down at that zero rate as I plugged it in to see really how long it would take to charge up the battery. I noticed that as I was getting, you know, as you drive the car, just like as you use a cell phone or whatever, the decreasing of the percentage number on that battery seems to like go somewhat quickly, I would say. Um, but then when I got down at 5% and it clicked over to 4 I was like driving, 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 and driving. And the battery would not go below 4%. I must have driven at least twice as far as what I would have expected it to take for a percentage to go down. And it would not go down. I was driving at like 65 miles an hour and then going slow and then taking the corners pretty quick. I was gunning it, although I'll tell you under 10%, it seems like the car regulates your ability to like punch the accelerator. So I was doing some good acceleration, but it just was not going below 4%. So I'd be interested to know if any of you have had that experience too. It almost appears as if Tesla is giving you a couple extra miles in the battery so that you don't just have this like linear decline uh, in your range or the battery percentage so that you can actually go a little bit farther, especially if you're that close to zero. Um, but I noticed that. I went down one hill when I was at 4% and it regen back up to five and it was like, I'm never gonna get down below 4%. So let me know if you've had that experience. I think it's uh, pretty interesting. So you might have a couple extra miles in the battery uh, when you need them most. Now let's get to the numbers. As you can see here, I made a table and I have a couple slides uh, to talk about a couple scenarios. You can press pause if you actually wanna read all the details of the table. I will warn you, these are not scientific numbers here. Um, this is not data coming from the car itself. This is just me uh, plugging in the car, taking a picture of the dashboard, unplugging, taking a picture, and then running a couple calculations. They're not scientific. I think they're pretty good, but feel free to debate them in the comments below. What you're going to see here, though, is I took um, four main sets of data points that deal with the percentage when I started, percentage when I stopped, and then what the kilowatt rate was, the kilowatt hours that I put into the battery, amps, which I'm still not that strong on, volts, and then the time it took uh, to get that charge. You're also going to see from um, the first row to the second row, there was this interesting gap from 15% to 17%. I disconnected the car when I thought I might burn down the house on that extension cord. And then when I plugged in again the next morning, it was at 17%. So either Tesla has this amazing ability to harness energy from the ether, or uh, when the batteries had a little bit of time to sit and think about what the real charge is, it will adjust accordingly. Uh, and so that gave me two bonus percentage points. 
And then on the next row, I go from 46 down to 43. I had to take my mom shopping. And then I did a final test from 81% to 89% to see if uh, there would be some sort of trickle experience. That was basically the same rate as I got on all the other experiences. So I think that term trickle charge is more if you're supercharging and getting those rates and then you kind of come down as the battery is reaching 90, 95% and you get down towards like, I don't know, what have I seen? Seven, six, five, maybe as low as three as it's topping it off. If you're clocking in at one kilowatt, you're already at a super trickle. So it appears the concept of trickle charging does not really apply at home charging because the whole thing is a trickle. Um, but those are the numbers you can see there. Uh, I put a total of 68 kilowatt hours into the battery and that took me 63 hours, two minutes. Two quick scenarios. If you want a 50% charge on 110, uh, that means you're going to have to put 36 kilowatt hours into the battery. That's half of the 72 kilowatt hour capacity of the battery, as far as I've read online. That's what the Model Y has. Could be a little higher, uh, but 72, I think, is a fair conservative number to work with. And therefore, one hour at one kilowatt gets you one kilowatt hour of energy. I'm not sure if I'm stating that totally scientifically correctly, but I think that's more or less accurate. Therefore, getting 36 kilowatt hours of juice into the battery is going to take you roughly 36 hours or one day, 12 hours or one and a half days. And then the next scenario, if you want to go from near zero up to 80 percent, uh, that charge is going to put 57.6 kilowatt hours of energy into the vehicle. Therefore, to get 57.6 kilowatt hours of energy into the vehicle, that's going to take you 57 hours, 36 minutes, two days, nine hours, 36 minutes. So that's how long it's going to take for you to charge your car on 110. So good luck. That's how long it took me. And uh, it's good to know that I can charge for my parents' house now and I can basically drive anywhere in America. Thanks for coming along for the ride. And let me know in the comments below what your experiences have been.